In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I'm planning to run my orcs into the future of the 10th edition codex, and that's going to be with the Beast Snagger army. That's right, I'm going all in to the big hunt attachment, hunting down the biggest and baddest prey on my enemies list with a mountain full of sugar boys and a bunch of kill rigs by my side. This is how I plan to run my 10th edition orc army. But yes, there's so many people who disagree with this and believe that beast snaggers are absolutely garbage. They're a stupid army that randomly came in and ruined orc synergy, and this attachment is one of the worst in the codex. And while though those may be somewhat true, especially the part about being some of the worst codex, one of the worst attachments in the codex, I still believe that this attachment is really, really good, and when paired up with the right matchup, can do absolutely hell to the enemy. And if you're playing it well enough and play with the correct units in the right way, this attachment can be hell for anybody. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you how exactly I plan to change up my list and give you an example list of what like I'm going to run with the Beast Snaggers and how I'm going to prepare it and what units I might bring besides Beast Snaggers. And I'm also going to run you through the basics of the rules and strategies and enhancements and kind of give you a really full in-depth guide. Yes, I've already done this previously on my channel where I ran through the Beast Snagger attachment, but I want to give you a full in-depth one because this is my very, very favorite attachment and I want to give you like the best, most like mind-poggling for me all my competitive knowledge into this attachment and give you my best ideas and my best thoughts about how we can run better with the Beast Snake attachment. So, I don't want to waste any more of your time, let's jump straight into it with the very first one, which is the core rules of the Beast Snake attachment. Now, the core rules is basically just Oath of Moment for the Beast Snake boys, but instead of getting a full hit reroll against the enemy, it is now a full reroll charge roll and bonus 1 AP to range and melee attacks. So, basically, when you choose your prey unit for that entire match, for that entire command, or for phase, sorry, for turn, I keep messing up, turn, the turn, yeah, turn, you get plus 1 AP, and, in range and melee, and you get a full reroll charge roll. This can be used two ways. Number one, this brings up the chop, basic choppers from AP1 to AP2, which is awesome. And great beast stack is a great threat, especially if you're looking at like these really large, annoying vehicle models, like large transports, which, which force them to have an emergency disembarkation, which then allows you, because you're already in melee, for them to have to move back in a position that might help you out. Or it allows you just to take down these annoying vehicles full stop. If you're going into a knight army, basically you just choose whichever vehicle you want, your favorite knight, and you go for gold. But in other armies, this can really work well at taking down massively annoying vehicles, but also getting into transports and forcing the infantry units to disembark in a way that you didn't want them to, or threatening them with a potential chance of having a targeting of prey, and then they don't really want to transport up because they don't really want to lose the infantry model. This also works really well in a situation where your character has to be picked. Now, for this, you can't just have both movement on anyone. It has to be a monster, vehicle, or warlord, and if none of those are present in the enemy's list, you can choose a character. Um, but this can work really well against a warlord or a character-based um or a character-based uh, unit who's running into a really big squad, or any monster or vehicle who just generally leads a, um, a squad or leads a situation that it was really well for you. Basically, it's all about positioning, because the infantry unit's going to be up on the board, sitting, kind of wanting to get the points, and the monsters and vehicles are either going to be sitting back, doing a bunch of indirect damage, or going to be up. Either way, it's about positioning. If you can choose the correct one that benefits your movement phase and allows you to kind of have the better go if i'm going to say that correctly um you can use the reroll charge roll to get some insane movement because the beast snagger boys with the kill rig when an enemy is snagged they get a plus one to charge roll so you're getting a plus two charge roll getting an advance in the war getting a like six inch seven inch charge because you're minus two and having a full charge reroll you're looking at a pretty strong movement potential so you can feel decently confident in the chances that beast snaggers are going to charge and with all the new rules that are coming out with allowing beast snaggers to charge more you can feel confident with this so also don't forget to use it as a movement strategy for if you want to get up on the board and you want your units further up you can use this with the wah advance and charge and get like a six inch charge with a full charge reroll and just make life a lot easier for you for getting ground this allows you to become on points and just do a bunch of damage to the enemy in a select way so don't feel scared to charge with these guys because charging is a whole lot easier with this attachment so ultimately it, like i said it's like i said in the beast tank attachment the beast tank attachment video it's a bit niche but it can still work characters still work warlords still work it can work obviously you want monsters and vehicles because everything's anti monster anti vehicle anti monster pretty much but it can work for warlords and stuff and the real charge rolls are amazing 
and it makes sense for it, it's more accurate. You know, beast snipers want to hunt the biggest target possible. So having a massive unit, um, enemy unit in your army, they want to hunt that. So it makes sense for them to hunt that stuff. So obviously, core rules is awesome. You get that plus one AP, so all your um strong units are getting that plus one AP. Especially your massive squid hog blobs are getting that. Your um kill rigs are going to be getting that with their um with this the the gun that lets the enemy be snagged and like the the catapult and like the warboy tower they're all getting plus one ap so the warboy tower is like ap4 now i think or ap3 like that's good because it's not just melee it's also range that makes it really good so ultimately good movement strat for getting faster movement and confirming charge rolls and to get you up on the board faster but also great for increasing the killing potential of just anything amazing so yes use this as killing but also remember use it as a movement potential now we're going to go to the strats and enhancements these are interesting because some of these are really good, some of these are really bad. Unstoppable, unstoppable momentum is simply used um, against uh, uh, basically just infantry units. You run into the infantry unit, you do a bunch of mortal wounds to them, and it makes it a lot easier. You're really only going to use this for squid hook boys um, into a large squad of infantry units who can take uh, one mortal wound and die from that. So one wound, large squad of infantry models. Other than that, it's really niche. And it can be helpful just to do extra bits of damage. It's like six mortal wounds can be really good, especially if it's your prey unit charging in there. It's nice if you've got a squeak hog boy unit who can make a massively long charge. But other than that, it's pretty useless. I would save this for your prey unit and otherwise just don't touch it really much. Uh, drag it down. Uh, Beast Snaggers get sustained hits one and also critical hits on five if you're targeting their prey. This is a common stratagem that's going to be used all the time. This is your go to stratagem. Every round you'll be busting this one out because this is what you want. This is going to be getting critical hits on five and um sustain hits just continuously so this is why i really like the idea of running some kind of lethal hit potential this is why the kill rig works so well into this because suddenly you put this on a beast snagger unit and obviously you need a six for it but if you get the kill rig lethal hits you chuck it on the beast snagger unit they're not hitting lethal hits on fives and they get sustain hits on also five so it just makes life a lot easier and allows you just to be that so much more and it's not capped like the wild tribe one was this is just like allows you to just go full out with it and get lethal hits that's why i optimize anything to do with um lethal hits like um the kill tower or gas go further on that in a minute but the point is is that this is what i think of this is a common go-to stratagem this is what you want to do and that's what you'll be busting at every single round just giving your beast naggers your um squid old boys your mozrog strike bad um even your kill rig just continuously staying hits just to do more things uh that one's even bigger basically it's advance and charge and fall back provide you with 10 to charge this is all about the beast boss and beast boss because obviously you want to get, you want to fall back and you want to charge again gives you dev wound this one's all like just for beast snagger pretty much um advance and charge is nice if you want to like get an early wire off with your prey unit so like battle round one you want your beast snake you want your squirrel boys up you want to scout nine with um beast boss and squeaker saw and then you want to check an enemy out and then you want to um uh you want to charge them you want to advance and charge and then you want to get that full hit reroll against the prey unit and then you just want to run in there and just do a bunch of damage with them fair enough but this can be nice in the wild mainly it's used for the fallback and charge because of the beast 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 boss so you get the um, dev wounds continuously but other than that it can still be used to a decent extent um what do you, where do you think you're going uh enemy units that fall back with beast snagger units infantry models um can make a normal move six inches i believe you can't end with engagement range because of this this is simply used um, as a nice one if it's like, it's pretty niche, but it's like used if you want to get better ground. So like, for example, if they fall back and you're off a point, you can move signatures onto the point or you can move to move block something or you can move to do charge something else. Like it works, but it's very niche. It requires the enemy to fall back. So obviously you want to target a shooting unit that forces them to fall back if you want to like get something off like this. But other than that, it's kind of, yeah, it, it's for a neat situation. If it does come up, it's nice to have. Otherwise, you're not really going to be busting this out every time, like um, the Drag It Down Detachment of uh, Strategy. Uh, Stalking uh, Tactics is covered for infantry models. And this is nice if you have an on foot uh, infantry model. If you have a Pain Boss, which I'm talking about later, with 10 Beast Snagger Boys. Um, if you have this, chucking this on in every like two rounds is just to like you know give them a bit more color, give them a bit more stealth. Can be nice. And it's just good to generally. Um, have that benefit of cover and stealth for the infantry and just allows that on foot infantry model just to not die as easily so that's what you're looking at you want to run a basic one which you're not really going to uh it can be nice but if, it, if a model just comes out and it's going to be shot by a bunch of stuff is it just like nice just to chuck on it like if you have a beast boss goes out of kill rig with beast snagger boys gets out on a point getting shot by a bunch of um i don't know votan hearth guard you chuck this on it and all of a sudden it has um, stealth, which means they're minus one hit, and it gets benefit cover, so plus one saving roll, which is nice, and ultimately it isn't that bad. 
Um, Instinct of Hunters is Return of Strangers. This is awesome. And this is why I believe that if you guys in the right matchup, you can take Fix with these guys. Fix is actually a very good option with these guys. Having Bring It Down, obviously, they're going to do that very, very well if you're in the right matchup, obviously. But also, having this ability to get behind enemy lines is also very good because you have the continuous ability just to jump back up, have strategic reserves, return back, rapid egress them back in. Obviously, you need to see you for that. Be rapid, rapid egress them back in, get behind enemy lines, and then just pretty much stay there with a pre tanky unit. Okay, let's quick squig. Hog unit to go in there, attack the enemy's um, uh, attack the enemy's um, home objective. Pray the unit, like get the prey on the unit with on home objective. Get a full hit charge roll against them. Plus one charge for our boys, and then to absolutely tear it through. So there's plenty of combinations you can do with that. I believe it works really well, and this can be a very interesting one. It's gonna be, it's gonna see a lot of competitive play. Trust me, this one is gonna see a lot of competitive play along with the drag it down. I think these are both really good ones, especially if you want to take, especially if you want to take fixed. And go ham with that. Um, so yes, all the stratagems I like. The only ones I really don't like is um, the uh, the kind of the stalking tactics because it's like eh, it doesn't really make sense. It's nice cover potential, but it just feels like it's just not that good, honestly. And all these are one CP stratagems, so it's nice. They don't really they can be thrown away a little bit, and they're not too expensive and not like a huge investment to make if that's what you're going with. Um, now the enhancements. Proper killie is plus one damage to melee weapons, which just basically means that like, you get a more killer unit. So if you want a really killer unit, um, just chuck it on a beast boss and swigger saw, chuck it on um, beast boss, chuck it on pain boy, whatever. You, you just chuck it on whatever you feel like, and it becomes more killie. Mainly for the beast boss because that brings stuff up to like damage four, which is amazing. Or the beast nut beast boss which also damage four. Um, so yeah, me likey, me likey a lot. Good fifteen point strategy um, enhancement, nice to go. Uh, Glory Hog, this is Scout 9 to the Squig Hog Boss, which basically means you can have a midfield Squig Hog Boss before the game even starts. Meaning you have so much pressure for the Prey unit, so much pressure for the home objective, so much pressure for any objective you're on, and just great potential just to decimate Scout units, decimate Infiltrator units, and how to have more Scout in the game. Along with the Zogra Wart Snagger 20 Aggression Mob, you now have two Scout 9s who are going to be moving up, which means you now have Scouts, and you can have Infiltrator if you include some kind of commandos or you include some kind of snicker so you're going to be have access to those scout things those infiltrator things and honestly could work really well if you play it cards right but honestly having a midfield eight man um squig, squig hog um unit with beast and squig assault is devastating i think it could work really really well um scrag every stat is sticky objective trick at the end of your command phase which works really well for things that you just want to throw around so if you've got a pain boss unit you can just throw them around have them walking around, tag your home objective, get in the truck, move up, tag another objective, or just heal stuff, or come around, or just um, return to return to strategic reserve, a rapid egress, and tag the home objective if you got it, and just do stuff like that. So it can be nice if it works, but you want to play it in a very specific way for this to actually pop off. So it is 25 points, a bit of an investment, but it can work if you're looking for that. And Slurry is a squig goth, a uh, minus one to win for squig goth boss, Provides strength greater than toughness, basically the casual beast in our experience. Minus one to wound if the strength is greater than toughness. This is kind of gay, and I don't really like it. If I'm just gonna be honest, it's kind of stupid. Um, now these enhancements kind of suck. If I'm gonna be honest, they're not really that good, but they can still work. They can still work. They're not as good as the strategy, but they can still work if you play them correctly. Now I'm gonna go into my example list, which gives you an example of how I might choose to run my squiggle boys or my beast snagger boys into the new codex when it's fully released and we have all points officially. Ready to go. Okay, this is my list example. We're running through them and I'll explain kind of my theory upon it. So it's going to be Boss Synchron, Gazgirl Thrackler, Mosrob Scrag Bag, Zorkra Wart Snagger, Beast Boss, Beast Boss on Squiggasaur, and a Pain Boss. Now, the Beast Snagger boys, one to be led by Beast Boss, and the next Beast, and the next 10 man Beast Snagger boss, boys, is going to be run by a Pain Boss. The Gretchen Moles, obviously, the 22, 22 man Gretchen Moles, is going to be run by Zorkra Wart Snagger. Um, oh, sorry, no, the Gretchens are actually split up into two squads, so it's two, two 11 man squads, not, um, not one 22 man squad. Uh, three Mega Knobs, uh, and that's, if you can see it, that's gonna be 6-6, six, six, which is actually gonna be 8-8. Eight, eight. Swiggo Boys being led by Mozrog and Beast Boss and Swiggasaur, and a Kill Rig for a vehicle. And if I have points left over, because of these unofficial points, I'll have a truck, um, right there, ready to go. So, my theory for this list is basically just to go full Beast Snaggers, but to get the huge benefits of lethal hits from Gazgol, so that the things that sustain hits and the hitting hit critical hits on fives is now going to be used so much more effectively. I personally think that Gazgol Thrackler is a huge benefit in this list, especially just to get that lethal hits off for the already really strong um, Beast, beast Snagger based unit. Now, some people will say, 
this isn't right, isn't competitive, don't take Gasgold, what are you doing? But I personally think that it can work really well if you play it in the right sense. So I'm going to give it a go, give it a couple of tests. I think it could work really well with the sustain hit strategy, which gives you quick loads on fives, not sixes. So I just want to take it, give it an example, and if it works, if it doesn't work horribly, then I'll replace it with a Kill Rig model or another Beast Boss squad. But I think it's going to have a potential to work really well. Boss Snicker up because he is now a lone operative unit, and honestly, a lone operative unit who can have infiltrator is amazing. I'm so glad they gave him lone operative if he doesn't lead the commando squad because now I can take him and I feel complete confidence he won't be absolutely shot off the board. And I love that very much. So Boss Nickrod coming in, scoring a bunch of points, scoring 60, 50 potential points, which is awesome, and I love them. Mozarek's Scrag Bag, Linear Squeaker Boys, because he does incredible stuff to them, and Beast Boss and Kugusaw, also Linear Squeaker Boys, because he does awesome stuff to them as well. Zorko Wartsnagger leading one of the Gretchen squads to give him that scat ability to have them up. Um, and then a regular Gretchen model just to do some side things and generate more CP. Beast Boss on one Beast Snagger and Boys, because obviously he gives them a bunch of buffs, minus points of hit, and just makes me love them that much more. Um, Pain Boss, Pain Boss, which is interesting, because I believe he can work really well with the Scrag and Tag, um, or Scrag every stash enhancement, which gives him the ability to gain, um, um, sticky objectives. So, you have him running around the board, tagging a bunch of objectives, zipping out of there with a strategic reserve, coming back in into an enemy's playing field, it can work really well. Or, if you have points left over, he can go on a truck, and just start tagging objectives from there. Tag it, next round get in, move up, get out potentially tag it there, and just do a bunch of stuff effectively there. So personally, I think this works really well. Um, three Mega Knobs, solely for the reason to protect Gasgol, so that the lethal hits on the walk goes ham, and the Prey units have nowhere to run. Um, two Eight-Man Squiggle Boy units, obviously because these are the best units in Beast Snaggers right now. Um, if you see them in this attachment, they're going to be the best unit by far, so you want to take like your 2x, 2x full man squads, even 3 if they're cheap enough, but this is what you're going to see. You're going to see a bunch of your boys, you want to go out on your boys because this is what's going to give you the juice. And the last one's going to be a kill rig, because you want to be able to transport something out there. And a truck, if points are left over for my for my pain boss and beast snagger boys to let them go forth. This is my um theming of some kind of competitive-ish list. I believe this can work really well if played correctly. But it can also go really bad if you don't know what you're doing. So it's going to take me some time to warm up to the stratagems and enhancements, and even some of the prey units and targeting the right prey the moment at the right time. Never really played Space Marine, so I don't really have the core concept of Oath the moment down, uh, like how to pick the right target at the right time. But I believe that this, this prey is going to go really well, and I believe we can go really good with this um, list. So that's going to be my full Beast Snagger analysis video, where we'll I basically talk about why this is my favorite attachment and why I'm going to be running it into the future of 10th edition and the codex so if you like this video do all the cool youtube things give me a like give me a subscribe i want to keep growing this channel i want to keep making videos like this so just do all the stuff that helps support me out if you feel like that's what i deserve but that's gonna be all me for me today hope you really enjoyed the video and catch you in the next one where i talk about more orc stuff